but, but I think you're going to find a lot of environmental groups will be with us and, and environmental leaders with us. Look, um, I do actually look at the facts and make a judgment about issues. Um, I voted with my party well over 90% of the time because I'm a Democrat. I believe in our principles. But I'm not uh, an automatic vote for any proposition or anything. I think the issue's through. I listen to my constituents, and I make a reasoned judgment as to what ought to be done, which is why I think we have debates. What do you think your biggest three accomplishments have been since you've been in Congress? Stopping the dumping of VX nerve residue in the Delaware River, helping to write a loan, uh, a, a bill that creates uh, what's called direct student loans for millions of students around the country, and most recently getting signed into law a bill that helps people keep their homes in the midst of this foreclosure crisis, a bill that was signed by the president in the last week of 2007. Those are three things. Well, let me ask you about education, because Democrats like going around the country and saying, we're going to make loans more affordable, we're going to give you more money, students, so that you can go. There's a reality that the Democratic Party never talks about, and that is that the rate of increase of tuition is far outpacing that of inflation. It is has been literally almost every year for as long as I can look at those numbers. Should there be cost controls or curbs or incentives for colleges to not raise their tuitions annually as much as they do? And would you be in favor of that kind of legislation? No, I'm not in favor of that. I think that the better way to control college costs is by honest competition among colleges and schools so that students and parents can make an informed judgment. Here's what I'm also in favor of, Steve. I think we need to broaden college scholarships to take the place of student loans so that middle class people are eligible for a scholarship and not just a loan. Here's how I pay for it. Next year and the year after, the Bush tax breaks that were enacted early in this decade that I did not vote for will be up for renewal. Now I think for people who drive a truck or sell real estate or teach school, we should leave their taxes alone for the middle class. But for the top 5%, for the people making more than, let's say, $350,000 a year. I would let the Bush tax breaks expire. This would bring in about $1.5 trillion to the federal treasury over the next 10 years. Among other priorities, Steve, what I would do is use that to broaden financial aid to help people go to college. I would also uh, bring our troops home from Iraq and stop wasting $10 billion a month on Iraq's civil war. This right. is where the money would come from for these ventures. Let's talk about this gas tax. McCain and Senator Clinton, both senators, want to have a tax holiday this summer, the 18th cent or so, uh, federal gas tax. Are you for that or against it? I'm for that. Uh, I think a gas tax holiday is a good idea. I think it should be paid for um, by a windfall profits tax on the absorbent manipulated profits of the uh, industry. And another thing I think we should do, which will, I think, pass the House as early as this week, is adopt a proposal that I have co-authored that would stop the practice of manipulating the commodities markets on Wall Street. There, there is a secret um, futures market and commodities market for petroleum. And there's evidence, Steve, that the price is bid up by these manipulators in the marketplace, which then drives the price up at the pump, not based upon the actual cost of producing the gasoline, but on casino gambling. I think that's, 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 that's about 20, maybe 30 percent of, of the price increase of, of oil. Well, that's a big deal. That is, but that price could come down if we allow drilling in Anwar, if we allow offshore drilling, as well as doing more conservation. I'm not for those things. I'll tell you why. Uh, the, the Anwar, which is the Alaskan preserve, uh, would provide 1% more oil 10 years from now if everything worked out the way it should. That's not going to solve our problem today. And the same is true with drilling off the coast of New Jersey. I'm not for that, or, or anywhere on the Atlantic coast, because drilling for more petroleum-based product is not the answer to our long-term problem. Conservation and of a new green market an energy market for wind and solar and hydrogen and other alternative forms of power, that's the answer for this country, not more oil and not more imports. All right, more with Congressman Rob Andrews in a moment on Live at Issue. Stay tuned. Back with U.S. Representative Rob Andrews. Immigration, uh, you are or were in favor of defense along the border, correct? And do you see that as an area where you and Frank Lautenberg disagree? I supported defense because also in that bill, Steve, was a maritime security measures about keeping our ports safe, keeping uh, weapons and terrorists from coming in. I think the far better way to keep, uh, control our borders, and it's the main thrust of my ideas, is what we call biometric identification, so that we can take a, an eye scan or a fingerprint 
of anybody coming into the country with a visa to make sure they can't just disappear into America. I also think that we need um, more stringent penalties on employers who knowingly bring unlawful labor in. I'm in favor of people having the right to earn a green card or earn citizenship if they follow all the other laws, if they learn to speak English, if they pay their back uh, obligations in some reasonable and fair schedule, and if they pay all their future obligations. I do think that the undocumented workforce in this country is a positive for the country, and we need to find a fair way to enable these men and women to earn their way to the green card. So I favor the, the, the Kennedy approach on this. In, in a short answer, what would you do with the tax situation? Would you let, let the Bush tax cuts expire? For the bottom 95%, for the middle class, I keep the tax cuts in place because I don't think middle class. Exactly what level? That's that? about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year and under. Okay. Now, for people three fifty and up, I would let the tax cuts expire. It brings in a trillion five to the treasury. I'd use a trillion of it to pay down our deficit, and I'd use five hundred billion for health care, education, and other pro other priorities behind that. These kinds of answers are, are very good as a Democrat in going up against a Republican. But again, you are going up against a Democrat who's going to say that most of those policies that you're espousing, he also agrees with, or his supporters will say that. They will. And, and the question is not whether you agree with the policies, but whether you get something done. Washington isn't working, Steve. And if you're happy with the status quo, I'm not your candidate. If you think that business as usual and what we've had for 30 years is working, he's your candidate. But if you want to change and you want something different, particularly from South Jersey, you know, we haven't had a senator from South Jersey since Harry Truman was the president of the United States. And a lot of us think it's, that's a, too long of a delay. Well, let's so, talk about that. One of the reasons is yes. because of the population uh, size, obviously, in North Jersey, but the way politics is done in New Jersey. Are you going to be on some ballots uh, come next month in North Jersey where they can barely find your name? That's no, uh, I'll you tell you what. First of all, we have support in Bergen and Essex and Union and Hudson and Middlesex, but we're in row A in Essex and row A in Hudson, uh, and I believe row A in Union. We're, we're going to be right there at the top of the ballot, and more importantly, we're going to be at the top of the list of voters that want to change in this country. People that have woken up and said, you know, within your business party, as usual isn't working. Do you think in, in Essex and Bergen and Hudson counties and Middlesex counties that there's enough of a fight going on internally that Rob Andrews stands a prayer? I know it. I was knocking on doors in Bayonne yesterday. We have tremendous support there. I've been in the North Ward of the city of Newark. I, I was in Linden in Union County on Friday night. People are responding to a message of changing the country and having an honest choice in this primary. Look, Ray Durkin and Senator Lesnar have repeated it, right? Ray Durkin's for us, Steve Adubato is for us, uh, Senator Vitale, uh, Mayor McCormick, all kinds of leaders in the northern part of our state are for us. But more importantly, people who want to change in the country are for us. All right, more in a moment on NBC10 Live at Issue. Stay tuned for the Rob Andrews. You're watching NBC10 Live at Issue. Well, let's, let's talk about your wife for a moment, Camille. The, the decision to have your wife as a placeholder for your seat is something that your opponents are trying to make hay with. One, um, if she should win, is she going to be a candidate, or do you think someone else will take her position? That will be up to her. Uh, she speaks for herself, and will be up to the county committee people of the Democratic Party. But right, she, if you do not win against yeah. Frank Loudenberg, are you ruling out? taking that seat back. I'm not running for the House. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you say to people that say, look, I mean, this is old type politics again. Got Georgia uh, across behind you, and, uh, and Camille Andrews is going to take that position. I say Camille Andrews is the best person I've ever met. I'm so proud of her. I think she'd be a fabulous member of Congress. But he, here's the situation, Steve. Uh, I made this decision very late to get into the race. There are dozens of qualified Democrats in South Jersey who want to run for Congress. It would have been very unfair to compress the decision-making process into a couple of days. So the party leaders asked Camille to go on the ballot. She agreed. She's a great candidate. Uh, I hope that she wins the primary. If and when she does, there will be a consensus decision-making process involving the elected county committee people, um, and they will make a decision. And uh, quickly, in 15 seconds, FAA flights, Newark and South Jersey. Will you change those patterns? You bet we should, because it's a waste of money. It's a boondoggle. It should be frozen and changed. You bet. Congressman Rob Andrews, thank you Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate nice work time. time. And that's it for this edition of NBC10 Live at Issues. And a lot of reports will be offered an opportunity to be here. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Highsmith, and enjoy your Sunday.